Hey, it's great to have you back at The Sim Hanger. My name's Mark, The Sim Hanger, for all things flight sim related. In my last video, we took a look at graphics cards, and I made recommendations for those on a budget, entry level into VR, and both mid and top end systems. And I did this because there's quite significant changes happening in the various flight sim platforms at the moment. The upcoming Microsoft Flight Simulator, prepared version 5 takes DX12, and of course the incorporation of Vulkan into X-Plane 11.50 Beta. For flight simmers, there's probably more interest in hardware now with all these changes happening than there has been for some time. So my coverage of graphics cards would not be complete without us taking a look at what to expect for the balance of 2020. Now the battle lines are already being drawn up and the hype trail is well underway for both AMD's new releases and what's expected from NVIDIA. The reality of the situation is the status quo between AMD and NVIDIA has hardly changed over the last decade or so, and that being AMD dominating the best bang for your buck from budget to mid-range. But in terms of performance, it's NVIDIA all the way. So is there any reason to expect any change this time around? Well, there is some room for optimism. PS5 and Xbox Series X boasting 10 and 12 teraflops respectively and both offering gaming in 4K using AMD's RDNA 2 architecture offers a performance level from AMD we haven't seen before. But then again, we've got Nvidia about to launch their 3000 series cards. So, how will this all play out? It's going to be interesting. Please bear in mind that some of what I'll be covering and talking about is unconfirmed and is speculative. Let's get started. Let's start by having a look at what AMD may have up its sleeve. And the big question, of course, is will it be able to compete with NVIDIA this time around? What we do know is it will feature their RDNA 2 architecture. This will feature an improved power to performance ratio, ray tracing for the first time for an AMD card, as well as variable rate shading and a whole lot more grunt. AMD's current lineup is based on the Navi 10 architecture or RDNA. Navi 21 or RDNA 2, sometimes referred to as Big Navi, is the upcoming range. RDNA 3 is an upcoming development scheduled for 2022. We can get a glimpse of what to expect by having a look at the PlayStation 5 and Microsoft's Xbox Series X specifications, both of which are going to feature in addition to a Zen 2 8-core CPU, they will have a custom GPU based on the RDNA 2 architecture. Sony's upcoming PS5, for example, will have 36 compute units and Microsoft's Xbox Series X, well, that will have 52. To give you a comparison, the RX 5700 XT from AMD has 40 compute units. If we take the console data and extrapolate that up onto the PC, well, we could see a GPU with well over 5,000 stream processors. Perhaps something in the region of 80 compute units. For AMD, this would be a huge jump and put them somewhere in the territory of the 2080 or 2080 Ti. There's even speculation in the market that it could exceed the 2080 Ti by as much as 20%. This would be great news for Flight Sim because AMD normally come in at a substantially lower price than Nvidia. If this over time caused prices to fall, well, this can only be a good thing for us. There's a lot of speculation about what these cards will be called and what the range is, and quite frankly, we just don't know. It varies from the RX 5950, 6700 XT, and the 6900 XTX. Release dates are also unknown at this time, but AMD will certainly want to beat NVIDIA into the market before their 3000 series hits. So sometime between September and late November Thanksgiving can be expected. Let's hope this becomes a reality. It'll be great to see some more competition in the market. Before moving on to NVIDIA, and for you laptop users out there, let's just get a quick update on Project Z. 
This is an in-house Intel Tiger Lake development featuring a new and improved GPU. Early indications of performance are encouraging. Battlefield 5 with all settings on high, averaging 30 frames per second. And that's on a thin and light laptop. Let's now turn our attention to NVIDIA and let's see what they've got coming up. In the case of AMD, we had the console data to base our speculation on. For NVIDIA, that's not the case and all we've got are a number of reported leaks and images. The images were first released on a Chinese website, chappelle.com, and picked up by Igor's lab, as well as a few other tech sites. The images clearly show it as a RTX 380. The housing has a distinctive crossover design, two fans, one on either side of the graphics card. Now there's no way of knowing whether this housing is in fact the 3080 or not. But interestingly, NVIDIA have ordered an internal investigation to find out the source of the leak. The source of the leak is expected to be one of two component manufacturers for NVIDIA in China. From the pictures, in addition to the two fans, we can see that there's been some considerable effort in terms of heat dissipation, with almost the whole housing being covered by the cooling slats or fins. More recently, the website video card showed a picture of what is apparently an ASUS 3080 Ti. Allegedly, the picture was leaked directly from ASUS's design proofing process. This picture shows three fans and clearly shows the 3080 Ti moniker in the bottom left-hand corner. NVIDIA's next generation of graphic cards is moving away from the Turing to the Ampere architecture. The current range, as well as a number of previous generations, were based on the 12 nanometer manufacturing process. Ampere, it's rumored, is moving to 8 nanometer, courtesy of Sony. A number of websites and magazines have published supposed specifications, none of which can be verified at this stage. This one shows the top end range as being the RTX 3080, a 3080 Ti, and a 3090. Personally, I think a 3090 is unusual. NVIDIA don't usually use a 90 except for a dual GPU. The 90 designation has subsequently been replaced by Titan. Just do a search on Google for RTX 380 specs and you'll find a wide and varied range of different specifications, some of which can be taken with a fairly wide dose of skepticism. However, we can be confident that NVIDIA will have a fairly expansive range of products, probably from the 3060 upwards. And there does seem to be some common denominators. Memory bus width, number of cores, and the 3080 having around 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, and potentially the Titan a massive 24 gigabytes. One piece of information that does seem genuine is a set of benchmarks on 3D Mark Game Spy graphics posted by Rogame or Rogami. Amongst the benchmarks, he found an unknown NVIDIA Ampere GPU score, which we assume to be a test of the upcoming graphics card. The stock standard RTX 2080 Ti is shown at the bottom there, scoring 13,939 in the benchmark test with the unknown graphics card from NVIDIA clocking in at 31% faster. There are, of course, at this stage a number of big questions unanswered. Release dates are not known, but it is assumed certainly 2020 and sometime between late September and Thanksgiving. If they get out into market before AMD, this may dampen some of the impact of the big Navi releases. Prices are also unknown and to some degree again may depend on what AMD do and when they get their cards to market. I wouldn't bet on a different pricing strategy from Nvidia quite at this point. For the top end card, mortgaging your house, well, that may be obligatory. So we've just had a glimpse at what may be coming up before the end of 2020 from the two big graphic card manufacturers, AMD and Nvidia. And will AMD finally have an enthusiast-rated, performance-orientated graphics card to take on the likes of the 2080 Ti, or perhaps even more than that? Or will NVIDIA continue to dominate the market with its 3000 series graphics cards? Well, time will tell. I hope you found this useful and informative. 
Thank you very much for joining me. Take care and bye for now.